Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Ken Y. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, over the weekend, Tobias Lind shared a new flyover at Berlin showing us some Model Y long range variants ready for delivery. Now, typically this would get people excited because it could indicate an inflection point for the production ramp. As to date, it's only been performance Model Ys that have been built and delivered from Giga Berlin. However, Drive Tesla Canada is reporting that these Model Y's long range are going to be a fleet delivery and that customer deliveries of long range versions won't be until later this year. So over the next few weeks or months, customers in the area will still be getting the long range version imported from Giga Shanghai. And generally speaking, fleet customers aren't as nitpicky when it comes to panel gaps and little things. So when you start a new production of a new vehicle, sometimes it's best to opt for those deliveries first. On that note for deliveries, this Thursday will be the last day of the quarter, so we should get Tesla's deliveries for quarter two, released sometime this coming weekend. And when it comes to expectations, all of the consensus estimates, whether it's from Bloomberg or FactSet, and then we're going to get Tesla's company compiled expectations sometime this week. But to keep things simple, I would just shoot for 250,000, anything above that figure and it should be good to go, anything below that, and there may be some negative impact on the Tesla stock in the short term. And just remember throughout the course of this week, we should see Wall Street analysts continuing to revise their estimates for their expectations for quarter two deliveries. In this case, we have Mizuho Securities lowering the bar to 232,000 cars down from 296,000. And RBC's Joseph Spack has upgraded Tesla to outperform, but is still only expecting 249,000 units delivered for quarter two. However, I wanted to highlight what he said. While Tesla is fairly secretive about the deals they have cut for supply of raw materials, in talking to contacts, we believe they have done more than other OEMs. This should not come as a surprise, and this is part of why we've transitioned into covering daily news. Over time, it gives you the ability to pick up on the steady drumbeat, and we can understand who's doing what and who's not doing what, so you don't really have to talk to contacts to know that this has been the case for some time. You guys may recall this article from last week where IG Metall said Tesla's wages at Berlin were too low, in some cases 20% too low. Well, fast forward to today and we see this. Tesla is raising wages at Giga Berlin effective August 1st of this year by 6%. And we said last week that if Tesla indeed needed to raise wages and that report were true, they had the ability to do so and they would. So here you have it. This change should apply to employees on the factory floor as well as managers of those teams. And just a quick note on this Bloomberg article from Dana Hall who has historically been fairly critical of Tesla, basically saying that some of the people Tesla is laying off were employees that were just hired sometimes a few weeks ago. Once again, personally, I'm not really surprised by this because of one thing Elon said. He said that Tesla in some cases grew too fast in certain areas, meaning people they hired recently over the last few months may also need to be let go. Once again, it's unfortunate for these people, but it's just part of the macro environment that we're in. But I have to say, for Dana to say that because Tesla is laying off a few people that were hired recently, that that then somehow suggests a strong run of execution has now come to an end, that's a bit ridiculous. Let's rewind the clocks almost two years ago when Elon said vector space bird's eye view coming with FSD. Well, fast forward to today and this is the first time I've seen this. This was shared by Vishal on Twitter. Scrolling down 360 degree view parking. So the way he saw this visualization, yes, it's a FSD feature only, but when you swipe it to the right to see the full screen visualization, and when you go to park into a spot, this is what you will now see. This may have been out for a little bit of time, but like I said, this is the first time I've seen it. And sure, I'm sure many people would still prefer a direct video feed and that this feature is available to everybody, not just people paying the full rate for FSD. However, thought it would be nice to know. Along those lines, Tesla Hype put together a very helpful chart comparing the features of autopilot, enhanced autopilot, and FSD. So go ahead and take a screenshot if you'd like. Also just wanted to mention there's a lot of people online mentioning the green light chime feature. If you're not familiar, when you're at a stop light, this is a feature that will ding when the light turns green. So if you're on your phone or not paying attention at a red light, there's an audible sound to remind you that it's time to go, which many people really like. So you know how here on Electrified, I scour the web for the best Tesla and EV news and compress it down into bite-sized segments. 
Well, my question for you is, would you enjoy something similar but in the finance world? If so, you should probably check out Finimize, the sponsor of today's video. It's an app that helps you become a smarter investor in around 10 minutes a day to help you make better financial decisions. Many of you know I have a background in finance and one of the main reasons I chose to work with Finimize is because I believe our education system is doing a terrible job teaching people about finance, a pretty important topic. Not only are there over 1 million users already on Finimize, but my favorite feature is the ability to listen to articles on the go. And yes, you can lock your phone screen and the audio will continue playing at whatever speed suits you best. You can also have the audio playing while you continue to browse other articles in the app. This feature alone is such a beautiful thing. Finimize has short and engaging stories to help you understand the biggest financial opportunities and has guides on financial literacy. In 2021, Apple chose Finimize as its app of the day, and rather than doing a day's worth of research, you can spend 10 minutes on Finimize. So if you'd like to become a smarter investor, just click the link in the description below to get a one week free trial of Finimize and 40% off. Remember, if you like Electrified and you're interested in finance, this is probably at least worth giving a try. In a recent interview, the CEO of ExxonMobil said that every new car sold in 2040 globally will be electric. Perhaps even more interesting was the fact that he said that change will not make or break this business or this industry, quite frankly. ExxonMobil did some calculations and predicted that oil demand in 2040 would be equivalent to what the world needed in 2013 or 14, and the CEO said at that time Exxon was still profitable. There's definitely a lot we could say here, but before doing that now, I want to give you guys a chance to watch some of these videos. There is a documentary on Exxon titled At the Crossroads on YouTube. I will link it below if you want to check it out over the next few days, as well as the interview with David Faber. Marco RP Tesla on Twitter shared some new plans for Tesla's Burnaby Service Center in BC. This one is indeed pretty big. This is not new construction, it's plans to revamp a current industrial building that will become a sales service and delivery center. No word on if the construction overhaul has begun, but hopefully this is up and running sometime next year. We got some new UN regulation that will bump up the allowable speed limit for automated lane keeping systems. It's going to go from that 37 mile per hour limit up to 80 miles per hour in certain situations. It should be noted the higher speed limit will still only be for motorways and it will also allow automated lane changes. This will go into effect January of 2023. So this is good news for autonomy in general. However, it's not really applicable to Tesla. If you read further, it says, this amendment is building on the foundation of this, which was the first international regulation for level three vehicle automation. Tesla is still technically classified as level two. There were some people online taking this to mean this would open up the path for Tesla's FSD internationally. However, these systems can be activated only under certain conditions on roads where pedestrians and cyclists are prohibited. So if you were expecting FSD beta city streets to now just be available anywhere, that's not exactly what's going on here. And lastly, this regulation sets out clear performance-based requirements that must be complied with by car manufacturers before equipped vehicles can be sold within countries mandating the regulation. And in terms of the UN's involvement, one of the treaties is transport and communications for road traffic. And going back, you have the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, which is actually hosting this World Forum for Harmonization of Vehicle Regulations, which is the governing body that actually adopted this new amendment regulation. Just last week, we talked about Tesla's new prefab supercharger install process, and the Cybertruck guy on Twitter saw one on the road, superchargers being transported already on a concrete slab that will just be crane dropped into location, and then the difficult part actually getting it connected to the grid, which is causing some delays. Speaking of superchargers, GF for Tesla on Twitter shared some images of Tesla's creation of its double-decker charging system. So when Teslas are loaded onto the two-story trucks like we just saw at the beginning of this video, it can pull through this little driveway essentially and charge the vehicles on the top part, which is pretty neat. 
The Cybertruck guy also shared this image of something that I personally hadn't seen before. It says rerouting to a less busy supercharger. Now, based on some reading, I can't tell if you can accept or deny this change. Maybe you want to go to a specific supercharger even if it's busy. However, the point here is that Tesla has the ability to do things like this with all of the real-time data that it has at its own supercharging locations, meaning many other competitors won't be able to do things like this anytime soon. Just remember, as with most new Tesla features, it's going to take time to continually improve. There was an Apple CarPlay hack for Tesla vehicles trending over the weekend. Now, I can't recommend doing this, but if you wanna make your own decision, I will include a link to this article and the how-to and GitHub below. Some data from Axios saying that Tesla accounted for 61% of all EVs registered in the United States in April, the most recent month that the data is available for. The next closest, Ford 8%, and then Hyundai and Kia both at 6% respectively. And most importantly, as always, just remember that yes, Tesla's percent market share of the EV market will continually come down in different regions as the overall EV market grows. The real number to watch is going to be Tesla's percent of overall, not just EV auto sales. We got some good data from the Wall Street Journal. In the month of May, the average price paid for an EV in the United States was up 22% year over year to $54,000. Now, compared to an ICE vehicle in the same month of May, prices were up 14% year over year, landing at 44,400 for this year. So on average, EVs selling for about $10,000 more than the average ICE vehicle. And listen to what RJ Scaringe said recently. We're in a world where it almost seems like limitless in terms of willingness to pay, talking about consumers wanting to buy EVs. This has been my most curious thought, where is Tesla's limit? Meaning at what price would Tesla's demand meet its current production capacity? Would it be 80,000 for a Model Y? 100,000? Obviously, like RJ said, this is not going to last forever, but for the foreseeable future, I'd be very curious to find out. Good news here, as 158 Tesla Mega Packs are on their way to Hawaii to become operational in a battery energy storage system by September of this year, that yes, will replace the last coal plant in Hawaii. This project is set to be 565 megawatt hours, which is pretty large. As Tesla usually does, it will be offering free off-peak supercharging at select locations from July 1st to July 4th for the holiday weekend. Here are the locations. I'll include a link to this below so you can read more detail. Hyundai released some teaser images of the Ionic 6 that is expected to be debuted this week. And of course, remember what Elon said about Hyundai that they're doing pretty well. Motor Trend tested the DC fast charging for Toyota's BZ4X and came to the conclusion buyers in colder climate regions can simply scratch off this vehicle from their list. They went to a 150 kilowatt Electrify America station and after driving the BZ4X for around 45 minutes to make sure that the pack was not super cold, this was the charging curve they saw. The peak charging rate was in the neighborhood of 65 kilowatts, only until about 35% state of charge, and then it trailed off from there. At around 60% state of charge, it was down to around 40 kilowatts. And Motor Trend said, forget about charging beyond 90% to full since the charging rate drops to one kilowatt and it will take seven hours. This article kind of highlights why I'm such a fan of Tesla. If you see this, this is for the Mercedes EQXX. This is basically a research vehicle only. It is not going to be for sale. And it makes you wonder why Mercedes-Benz is spending so much time doing this instead of spending its time actually building quality EVs. Just know this research thing is basically what Tesla does in an ongoing fashion with all of its vehicles. Rather than wasting time on a prototype that will never see the light of production, they work on these new innovations and continually build them in as they can, and I absolutely love it. It's essentially the approach that Ford and VW are trying to emulate. Drive Tesla Canada is reporting that Tesla is now including enhanced autopilot for some of its existing inventory. Lucid is now offering existing reservation holders the ability to upgrade to a higher trim back at the lower original pricing, up to June 30th. So existing reservation holders have a few days to take advantage of these original prices. And don't forget to check out Finimize, at least take advantage of the free week trial and see if it's a good fit for you. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.